and welcome to yet another XFL reviving. There's a yet murderer another, in my basement. Yeah, yet another, another Eric Bischoff reviving. A Pat McAfee punting, Triple H shove of the centurying episode of the Brothers of Discussion. We're going to talk everything from MVP's plans for the Hurt Business. Dive into the Wednesday Night Wars as we do every week, and actually figure out what the heck the plan is with Raw Underground. Who is that for? I don't know. But Matt, before we do that, it's always a spicy week of wrestling. Um, how are things in your neck of the forest? Uh, they're doing good. So well that I cracked open. I shouldn't say cracked open. This bottle's been open for about a week. I think. Ooh, okay. uh, so this is on the verge of turning into vinegar, I, I feel. Uh, I can mm. tell by the taste. Um, so I, I'm doing pretty good, because I felt that... Is that right? Does this sound depressing? This sounds depressing, now that I'm saying it out loud. I was going to say, me drinking a bottle actually, of wine means I'm doing good. It's actually good. inspiring, because other people are like, oh, wow, good. at least I don't have it as bad as that guy. Uh, <laughs> Well, let me so, inspire the world. Uh. <laughs> I keep telling you what's going on in my life. Uh, man, things are going great over here, too. Uh, just uh, buying a house. Yeah. We're trying to, and we got the inspection today. And uh looks pretty good, if you don't mind. Mold and hornets. Uh, I've literally sandwiched with um, adventure. So I have mold up here, hornets down here. If only the hornets love to eat mold. We could get two birds with one stone but not the case uh looks like we'll need remediation uh oh matt speaking of remediation uh where can people do their brothers of discussion playation um out in the world uh find us at bodpodcast.com and brothers of discussion.com um you know i i'm always in a mad dash to do any of this stuff so actually while we're talking i i should probably remove our uh cbd medic uh materials and resources that we've uh provided everybody because that's <laughs> gone uh but uh you know special thank you to cbd yeah we just gotta going remediate under. cbd real quick All right. just like mold in your attic you should always have a good flow of air in your attic don't have static air and moisture up there it's it's terrible for your house uh let me uh i might have to walk away from a, a, a two hundred thousand dollar commitment well i mean pick your battles right do you want to have to right. deal with hornets or have to look for a house? It was only four hornets and they do live in the crawl space. And how often will I really go in the crawl space? So I guess exactly. that could be their territory. Right. And you could have new neighbors. I mean, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, for uh, self-defense will have like a gun in the house, but I could run to the crawl space and open the door and shake the wall a little bit and have some hornets come flying out at any uh, yeah. invaders. It's a magic hornet ball. Um, Find us on Twitter at BOD Podcast. Find us on Instagram, brothers underscore of underscore discussion. And um, let's see, what have I been doing? I've been throwing up some of that, uh, messing around with like Photoshop and stuff. And I'm doing like these uh, like five minute exercises. Like what can I do with screenshots on Monday Night Raw uh, in five minutes? And that's what I've been putting up recently. I, I'm, pre I'm pretty proud of the five minute exercise, but I need to really like hunker down and and like spend some time. You actually know that I spent uh, a lot of um, my Monday or two. No, my Wednesday. Jesus. Yeah, that was just yesterday. That was a lot yesterday. Of my Wednesday just trying to make a new uh, uh, logo for us. That's, you know, we do. We also do the uh, the hockey podcast. So I was like, oh, well, it doesn't make sense for our logo to be pro wrestling. Like we should have a Brothers of Discussion logo. Then we should have the wrestling podcast logo and then a hockey podcast logo. Yeah. Um, so that didn't go well, though. I, I got some feedback um, from quite a few different people. Shout out to uh, to Amy, who's always there. Uh, I sent her and uh, I sent her the logos that I had, I had uh, put together and she did not mince words. And like, this is the kind of stuff I need to hear. Like, I could yeah. put up some bullshit logo. If too many people were like, no, yeah, that's pretty good. And then they just kind of smile and walk away. Because nobody wants to tell you how they really feel, but uh, Amy, send send those vomit emojis. Do it. I, I swear, like I wish I had more people that would say the world like, needs more Amy's. Like I, I was about to say, I need people that say, "Here's the thing." I don't even need to hear. Here's the thing. 
I just need you to come out and say, that is bullshit. It looks like you have two dicks coming out of a ring holding microphones. And um, I'm making fun of our current logo. Also, apparently, all I ever do are, are make logos that look like dicks because that was one of the uh, responses I oh. got. That That's what everybody said about our current logo. And uh, the two I created yesterday, uh, that was also the critique. You're going to have to make the microphones look like two vulvas. Yeah. Just well, just just two vulvas meeting in the middle. <laughs> um, I thought I was doing a microphone for the new logo. All right, so I did the top of a microphone. Um, yeah. and it just That's uh, the text I got back was why are there two So I turned the top of a microphone into a B and a D. So I used two mic two venereal disease. Heads. Beautiful. B. Oh, a B. B. We're the brothers of discussion. We're not the brothers of discussion. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, this is good banter. Um, <laughs> this is what I've always wanted. I've always wanted us to banter for a very long time and then talk about These episodes are not long minutes. enough. <laughs> I, we need to end in 20 minutes. I, I would love to send out a poll to our listeners and say... Yeah, we know, man. We've seen your logos. We know you like sending out polls. <laughs> I want to go, like, how many of you actually listen to the end and are, like, on the edge of your seat going, I wonder who's going to win this week's Wednesday Night Wars. I, I just... I wish no, I, I do. Knew. I We need to send that stuff out. We need to figure out what people think. And I... Man, we can't... We'll, we'll work on it later. Uh, we got we got to figure this yeah. out. Um, right now, I, I do like our playful banter. It's, uh, so yeah, I, I like it too. Um, um, also, the new Twitter um, avatar that's up, I think, will humanize us. If uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, I mentioned at VOD Podcast, but uh, it's uh, you and I in quite the embrace. I think that was Christmas um, two years ago. Maybe three. I was trying to tell yeah. by the facial hair and my fatness. And it looks like, because this past Christmas, I was really fat. But uh, now you're uh, shredded. Yeah. Now you look yeah. like Carl Anderson. I, I look like the famous fat people that like go on. A you're, you're a machine gun Matt Clink over there. <laughs> <laughs> I should show my head. You have an ad? I have an ab, actually. I do. It's, like, right here. But I'm not going to show it because I'd have to pull my shirt up and you'd see all the flab. But I have an ab now. It's, like, it's right there. You know, I don't, like, like, don't want to lose... Cut, like, can you hear that? Like, yeah. There's there's a lot of flab, but... Yeah, it's, it's That's me now. slapping my belly button hole. <laughs> I don't want to lose a lot of weight. I just want to lose enough that when I pull my shirt up, like, my belly doesn't have to readjust. Like... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's my that's my weight loss goal. I I will tell you if you want to buy that house and then make a patio, uh, roughly twenty eight by sixteen feet. That will give you enough of a workout every day that you will get abs. I also don't have forearms, so this is also it's a good forearm workout. Um, I'm not showing these off. I don't. I'm saying I currently don't have forearms, but I really feel it. Uh, it hurts quite a bit. <laughs> well, man. Since you don't have forearms, I would not suggest you go in battle in the raw underground. Nope. It uh, and, uh it was it was pretty stunning uh to see WWE go in this direction. Um if, if I if, went into the raw underground, I would be one of the guys that Shane McMahon was like, All right, there's Dolph Ziggler. Oh, look at that other guy. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> it's like, come on, man, just Who wants to names? fight uh, all... the already rebranded Babatunde. It's it's like night one of Raw Underground, and he's already underselling the card. He's already like, oh, that guy doesn't matter. It's going to be a squash. It's like, come on. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, so the breakdown is it's it's kind of like Fight Club. Um, and it's, it's I guess they're trying to build it as real. There's no ropes. Um, it's dark. There's like weird uh, hip hop music playing in the background, and then people just get pummeled. It's not really a pinning scenario. And then in the background, while out of one side of their mouth, they're talking about women's revolution part two. Yeah. Uh, we just have like strippers dancing in the background. So. All right. So. A lot to unpack first. here. 
I think it could work. I'm going to fall backwards in my green screen. I think it could work. I did not hate it. Like some, I think, again, this is another thing why social media is so terrible, is that people just initially want to hate a thing because that's more fun to do on social media. I didn't really touch it when it was going on because I was kind of thinking, like, this could be awful, but, I mean... Seeing the Viking Raiders get involved was actually quite a, sh a surprise for me. And I like them kind of looking badass again after doing, uh, you know, some segments that you and I enjoyed quite a bit with the Street Profits. But um, yeah, it was a pretty big 180 for them, uh, right. character wise. It was kind of that old school Eric and Ivar where they're ah! after the big drop and he'd go head forehead to forehead. Like mm -hmm. we, they kind of got away from that. I, I think they needed a little more anger and intensity. And this this is a good spot to do it. And that, I bring that up as an example because that is what this can be. So the rap and the strippers, I think, gets away from what this message should be, is that this is like, you know, like Fight Club. This is where these guys can just let go. There's no ring ropes. Uh, there is a ref, but it looks like he's just there to make sure somebody doesn't die. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is something, too, that when Brock Lesnar gets involved, uh, holy crap, is that going to be amazing? And then when you've got, you know, Biggie and Brock Lesnar in the underground with two big meaty men slapping meat. Slapping meat. I had, like, that's where my head goes. Like, there's a lot of potential for this. There's a lot of hate for it, which I wish people wouldn't do. A lot of potential, a lot of confusing aspects to it. Again, I just don't, I think as they move forward, let's not even address it. Just strippers, gone makes that part yeah. like it's just sort of i i don't want to sound like an old man and i don't want to sound like uh the i gen or like what's the generation that's younger than millennials um like i don't want to sound like i'm being woke i just think it doesn't it doesn't make any sense for what it was trying to be so i it just felt like it was like let's see what we can hit here like if we want to be more adult the only th the thing that's more adult is is boobies, and it's like mm, that's more childish. Like you you kind of missed the mark there. That wasn't really adult. That wasn't like, and it made no. And it was totally random when they would pop in. Um, I don't know. Yeah, um, I think uh, the opportunity there was um, like the the people that they picked to fight there were it was a pretty pretty interesting choice. I think Eric and Ivar was um, you know a no brainer. Great Stable. choice there. Stable uh Baba Tunde, I, I get him, you know, they haven't really had a spot for him to perform. You know, he's just kind of been in the background and this is a good spot for him to look tough. And yeah, Ziggler, I think, was the most interesting choice. Uh just because I think I think we have that point of reference from Ric Flair where they would talk about, you know, who are the most um like intense fighters or wrestlers on the on the on the roster, on the payroll. And Ziggler always makes that list because, you know, they talk about what a great amateur wrestler he is. So when he, when he was out there, I was like, oh, I'll be goddamn. They, you know, they really do um, see him in that light, like as a legitimate fighter. So I think that was pretty interesting. But the one spot where they did miss, not just that they had the strippers, um, but if in some capacity we could take this just a smidge more seriously, this would be a great spot to either really kick it up a notch with Sonya Deville or Shayna Baszler to see them just like go super violent and, you know, channel their UFC powers. So having the women be relegated to dancing in the background to have them, you know, like have blood sport matches since Ronda Rousey left, you know, they haven't really treated anybody with that kind of like, um, legitimate like fighting background they haven't they haven't really pushed them to the top yet um yeah. and i'm looking at shit so, um, uh, to kind of get their careers going again in this ground so there's there's potential a couple weird couple weird uh choices in the in the first iteration I will say, uh, I think we lost you there for a second, but um, it sounded like you were saying it's a good spot for Shayna Baszler. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we're still losing you. You're frozen. Oh, nope. There's your eyes. They're blinking. All right. Oh, um, yeah, you were, you're back. The uh, the one person I oh, would yeah, like... Oh, yeah, I threw Sonya Deville, too. 
Oh, yeah, yeah I, I heard you say that. Uh, the one person I would okay. like to see down there outside of, um, you know, getting the, the women's division mixed in there. Uh, this might be a good spot to maybe punish a guy like Marty Jannetty for murdering someone. Um, oh, my God. I, I don't know how to deal with this because... It's so insane that you would make a post on social media to get attention, because that's what social media is, is you just want attention. That's what we do. Um, all night, Monday, Friday, and Wednesday, we just beg for your attention. Um, Marty begged for attention by letting the world know that he murdered someone. Now, the story of him <laughs> murdering someone is out there. I just, what I wanted to focus on today was his rebuttal, or his response that we got this morning. So I, I'm labeling it here, Mike, is don't worry, he fixed it. Um, I almost got raped. If I couldn't, this is Marty Jannetty. If I couldn't have handled myself, Thank you. that dude would have raped me. This And this is the now 60-year-old Jannetty. I didn't say I killed him. I said he disappeared. Boom. Problem solved. Marty Jannetty, you're a free man. <sighs> Please go walk with your other civilians. Uh, problem solved because um, he didn't kill him. He just disappeared in a river that happened to be nearby after he was punched to death. Um, all right. So <clears throat> we have, uh, what do we have here? We have one side of a story from a dead guy. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and we're missing the story from a dead guy. and. We now know that somebody's a murderer, um, in which case, you know, um, like I, I'd say sometimes when you watch Breaking Bad, you're still thinking like, ah, this Walt guy, he knows what's up. I'm going to root for him a little bit. Like you don't just admit it. You don't watch Breaking Bad and go, man, I want Walter to fail miserably. No, there's like something inside. Same thing with uh, John Hamm and Mad Men. You, sometimes like you watch it and you're not actively rooting against them. You're kind of like, wow. Yeah, go get him, John. Like it's it it's it's maybe it's maybe me just admitting I I am that terrible of a person. Um, so I'm the point of me saying that is is you know sometimes uh, or the show Dexter. Uh, you know sometimes the murdering, you know it died. It gets fuzzy. There's gray. There's gray areas and everything. There's not enough podcasters that mention the gray areas. There's too many. This is bad. This is good. Now, I will say, if I had to guess if Marty Jannetty was in the right here, I would say no. Uh, because why? Well, um, his career's not really going so hot. Uh, he does want attention. And he deleted it after he posted it. So... Uh, the initial post on Facebook. Um, so I'll say, just to catch myself here, uh, there are always gray areas, and we see that in our favorite TV shows. Uh, but here in the real world, uh, when you delete your Facebook post and then say, don't worry, I didn't actually admit to killing him. He just disappeared. Um, and also, like, we'll never know, like, what the actual story was there. Here, here we are. Um, just crazy. <laughs> that I mean, it's so hard to dissect. Because what, what do we want to do? Throw a guy in jail with our words? Um, which I'm not saying yeah, we literally are I, throwing him in jail. I'm saying, like, are we going to put a guy in prison just by our own opinions here? Um, or put him in our Brothers of Discussion prison? That's what I'm trying to say. Um, no, because we don't know the whole story. But it is pretty insane that Marty Jannetty... Uh, man, uh... I mean, looks like Frick, he killed a guy. Frick killed a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't really know what to do with this story. I, I guess because nobody was clamoring for a Marty Jannetty return. Um, I, I don't know why this is the podium he chose to uh, like out himself with this story. Um, and I guess just kind of the the offhand cavalier attitude that yeah, yeah the cops should have checked the river. Lol. Whoa. Like, check the river for a body? Oh. Jesus, Marty Jannetty. Lol. Shawn Michaels should have kicked you harder through that glass. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, okay. I, if was, there's a story that he was going to get raped, I, you know, that, what What are we supposed to do? Tell him not to have defended himself against right. the guy who's trying to rape him? That's I, what I, yeah. Th like, that's where you're trying to dance around this story where it's like, all right, he, he murdered a guy, but he says it was because he was about to get raped. Um, I just... 
you know, that part, do we have an opinion on? We have an opinion yeah, that it's... says rapists are bad. Murdering also bad. <laughs> it's that classic. Um, <laughs> I think we nailed it. There's like that classic meme of that. She's kind of like a middle aged lady, um, <laughs> and she kind of makes like a disgusted face, like Marty Janetti murderer. Ooh, and then well, he's gonna rape. Oh me. right. You kind of make that. Well, all right, okay. Well, I guess not so bad. Uh, <laughs> so I guess Marty really turned it around uh, by <laughs> cleaning up his Facebook and saying that he was doing a rape defense. Right. Nailed it. That's I, like I said, fixed. Done deal. The, detail, the details of this, that it was a rape defense murder that he threw a guy in a river, and then he was 13 years old? What was I doing when I was 13? I was filling out my Pokédex when I was 13 years old. This guy was murdering a rapist behind a brick building and throwing him in a river. I, I, did, I, I just, this is a lot to unpack. I, I don't know. I don't know what we do with this story, Matt. It's just... It, it's so wild, I think it needed to be touched upon. Well, Mike, another done deal um, in, <laughs> in the world of pro wrestling and sports. Uh, the Rock buys the XFL. Um, something that immediately made me not hate the XFL and wants, I want it to succeed now. I, uh, I think that, I don't know if everybody else felt that way. I'm also going to be voting for The Rock in the 2024 <laughs> election, so... Um, yeah, all of this thumbs up. I, I'm all about The Rock. If, if The Rock's got a movie coming out, I don't care what how bad the reviews are. I'm that guy. I go watch The Rock. I'm the guy that, uh, you know, if I was alive or uh, old enough in the 80s, I was alive in the 80s. If I was old enough in the 80s, I would be watching every Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. So <clears throat> um, huge fan of The Rock. Huge fan of this happening. I think it's pretty apparent that you and I are not huge fans of Vince McMahon, despite covering his product extensively. Uh, but having The Rock own this just like it's almost like the PR move of all PR moves for any company. I mean, it would be like Jeff Bezos, uh, selling Amazon to Tom Hanks. I feel like, like oh yeah, it's exactly that. Um, I would re up my Amazon tonight. I know, I would be exactly. all over that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, it it's almost a suspiciously strong PR move, like. You know, they get one of Vince's best buddies, you know, a guy who is, you know, good at impressing Vince. That's why he got all the spots that he did. But, you know, he's good at his job, too. And as far as, as people with names that can, you know, move product off the shelves, probably The Rock. I mean, the guy <laughs> doesn't have um, a, I, I don't know if he has, like, the greatest agent for choosing movies. But, by God, his movies every summer make a couple hundred million dollars. So. Just another puzzling detail of this story, too, is that it costs $15 million? Like, former Detroit Tiger Prince Fielder made $25 million in a year, so, like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we could try two out thirds, his XFL team. Two-thirds of, of his paycheck could have bought the XFL? I, I just know now I'm going to be applying, like, crazy to the XFL. Like, before, I actually made the conscious decision. I was like, why would I apply to the XFL to get a job there when they're going to be shut down within a year? No. But now that the Rock's there, I don't care how small that salary is. I, I want to jump in. All right. Yeah, um, I mean, especially for a guy who, um, you know, he talks so much about his sporting past and how tough it was for, you know, he had the football injury, and that's why he went into wrestling in the first place. So it's not just a great PR move. Like you can definitely see the emotional connection for the rock where it's these kind of ne'er do wells who've never quite made it to the NFL. So he's like trying to give them one more chance to kind of get on TV playing football. So it's, it's kind of a, kind of a similar story to like Cody with the AEW. You're kind of like, ah, oh, this guy just couldn't really make it on his own. So he just kind of made his own thing. And so the rock couldn't make it in the NFL. So he's going to make his own thing. So it's, I think it's kind of a lot of, um, um, a lot of appeals and underdog story. I, I just, the capper on this is just the investment of $15 million for this. Like, whatever The Rock's got going on, I I, I need a piece of that uh, fund that, I you know, like that. that's how this gets, the, these teams get purchased now, or these organizations, or, you know, this is an entire uh, uh, league. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bunch of monies coming from different areas, but could you imagine like what this could turn into with the rock backing it? And I know I'm giving a lot of credit to the rock business wise, 
but he did just make a pretty sweet business deal in a $15 million purchase of an entire sports league. There's a lot of potential there. All right. Uh, Mike, I mean, I thought, I thought that he increased the stock of peanut butter, French toast, and tequila. Um, but I can't wait to have that every cheat meal, except I have my cheat meal seven days a week. Anyway, uh, speaking of rehashing here, um, with the XFL, there's a rehash. You know, they were talking to MVP, I guess, um, because he's he's basically he's managing black superstars and being a black man. You know, the it's kind of posed to him. You know, what about like a what about like a redo of the Nation of Domination? And I, I think that that question was posed because <laughs> not just that all the um, characters involved are black, but also that. WWE historically has not done a great job of promoting black wrestlers. Um, and Nation of Domination was one that had singles stars, you know, in uh, Farouk Rod Simmons, uh, you know, in The Rock. Uh, D'Lo Brown was a heck of a European champion. Uh, but, oh, Mark Henry, of course. Yeah. Um, but it was just kind of cool because MV- MVP was saying that that does not interest him at all. Um I think this hurt business is really, really coming out strong. Um, he and uh, he and the boys, Shelton Benjamin and, uh, and Bob Lashley, uh, they got to crash that raw underground and kind of, you know, leave their thumbprint on it. Yeah. Um, for looking like tough badasses and I, MVP, I think he's he's absolutely just just crushing it right now. I, um, from a marketing perspective, huge, huge mistake. Uh, everything gets a reboot. Uh, I think uh, right now the WWE marketing team was like, n- no, not that you're you're not interested because we're telling you you have to do this. Like that is how this should have been handled. Like <laughs> um, that there's so much money in doing that. And I'm, I'm sorry to bring it to that, but there just obviously was. I think the T-shirts would be just pulled off the shelves fast enough to bring buildings down. There'd be no more brick and mortar that could hold a nation of domination set of t-shirts. That, from that perspective, huge misfire. Uh, like a branding perspective and all that, but from storytelling, like you gotta give it to MVP that he wouldn't just wanna rely on something that's already been created. He wants to do his own thing. Um, so I, it, that's impressive. That's tough to do and you don't see it in the entertainment world a lot these days. So I, I think... I think it 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 probably actually would have been a good choice from um probably from a black lives matter perspective like that would be a great way to like make a stand right now and they don't have to go the same exact way that nation of domination stood in the 90s they can actually pivot a little bit um and make it more relevant to today but uh yeah i i i think it's it's um it's definitely like all the power to MVP if this really is his choice or if we're talking like if this is is this just kayfabe him saying that he's not interested like is it MVP the character or is the human being saying no I, I don't want to do nation of domination I, I can kind of see where you know it would be easy cuz uh um it seems like wrestling fans you know i guess most people you know you want to you want to be with what you know you know that's why people rewatch the office instead of watching something new but with if mvp is going to redo the nation of domination i think the issue with that is whenever we do like a highlight montage of black wrestling it's literally ron simmons beat vader once and then even after vader took a finisher he immediately got up and started bumbling out of the ring like totally no selling it we had to wait all the way till Kofi Kingston, uh, like a year ago, you know, for a WWE champion. Uh, and we have, you know, the New Day, and then you have, you know, <laughs> pretty, pretty uh, uncomfortable to explain to non wrestling fans, um, like, like peaks for black wrestlers, like Crime Time, you know, where they gotta, you know um be part of the streets or they got to be street prophets you know they can't just be wrestlers they have to you know be black you know um so i think for mvp to uh, do the nation of domination and that was a successful group it's kind of saying that you know black wrestling is still only like a couple of successful entities and so for him to you know prefer to create his own new thing 
you know, and expand on that montage video. So it's not just, you know, 10 minutes of Ron Simmons highlights, you know, that same clip over and over. Now we'll have this other thing we can look at, you know, this, this other item, you know, with the, the Keith Lee's, the Sasha Banks, and now maybe with this hurt business. Um, so I, I think it's, it's, like philosophically and fundamentally the right move, even if it would probably be easier for them to, to market it and sell t-shirts as a nation of domination. No, and I, I think, uh, I think we're on the same page there. Um, and Mike, we also had, uh, you want to talk about Mustafa Ali reboot? Over a lot of reboots again? this week. Um, just, uh, just kind of a bummer because um, on main event, we've already got Mustafa Ali losing to Riddick Moss, who I, I don't know, he didn't really move the needle for us in NXT and, suddenly got shotgunned into the main roster and I don't know. We thought Ali was going to be the guy who was the hacker who was overseeing the, uh, you know, world wrestling entertainment, but that storyline just kind of got swept under the rug. Um, and now Ali's losing again. And we, we, you know, he kind of got his full name. So we were, you know, we were positive about that. And I don't know, it doesn't look like uh WWE is kind of going all in on him. So I thought there was promise of, with what his character was going to be. Uh, you know, people rooting for a guy named Mustafa. I, you know, we it's hard to root for guys who just keep losing because it's kind of like, what am I investing my time in for a poor character that's just not getting any recognition or push? So, I mean, yeah, I we're know. gonna we're gonna bring up uh, Bronson Reed later uh, in the show when we do the Wednesday Night Wars, and I I was watching a conversation happen. Um, on Twitter, where a pretty prominent uh, media type uh, who, you know, does his own stuff at home. He's not really a part of like a, you know, an ESPN or whatever. But uh, he said, like, I don't know why, but right now I'm really feeling Bronson Reed. And it's it blows my mind. Like, um, I have some Bleacher Report uh, quotes to go over today because I, I, I mean, I'm really the, the wrestling media really needs like to hit the reset button. Like it, it doesn't know if it wants to be kayfabe or not, but the Bronson Reed thing is like, he's always been Bronson Reed. They just gave him a three match win streak and a pretty convincing, like he can keep up with carrying cross match. So yeah, you're on board with him now because you watched him win. Like it, it's really that simple. And I, I just, it pains me to think about like how many wrestlers like don't get over with the fans just because they didn't have like that, that indie development. They don't get like the wins uh, on, on Monday night raw or AEW or NXT. And it's just like, just watch the man, watch the human. Baron Corbin's a great, he's a great fucking talent. Uh, I'll say it the cows come home uh and the fact that people just can't give him the time of day because like you said it he's got one of the best signature moves in pro wrestling it is so much fun to watch and nobody gives him any credit for it because they hate they don't they don't realize that they're not getting past the character that they're not I'm, letting the fact for the he, record we're not talking about end of days we're talking about the deep six yes I love the deep six. See, I yeah. stole, I stole from like the two K games. Not a finisher, <laughs> the the signature. The signature move, move. yeah. Um, <laughs> but like that, that right there, like, is a perfect example of what's of what would go on here. Like, Mustafa Ali would blow up um, if if they would just give him a couple of wins. And I, I, what's funny is I'm making the argument like from our perspective, we're on board with Mustafa Ali. If they're going to sit here and tell us that there isn't enough behind Mustafa Ali, just give him a couple wins. The whole world will get behind him. And it, it like that's the power they really truly hold. And they, they talk about like the fans hold all the power. No, they really don't. Give You could have given what they gave to Roman Reigns to any other pro wrestler. Uh, and they could have given it to like a Daniel Bryan and just had him be dominant for years. Um, and it probably would have gone over pretty great. I, I'm just, it's a, it's a, it's a two sided thing. Like media side of things, a pro wrestling super needs to change it. And and that's kind of actually when we started, we got away from our mission statement. That's what we wanted to bring a light to was how silly the pro wrestling media was and how lazy it was. And we used to have a game where we'd call out rumors that were bullshit. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. But then from the WWE side of things, like they have a responsibility and they're doing a great job. So really like um, what they're doing, you know, with MVP and Bobby Lashley, like they are actually propelling, um, you know, what, what would I want to say? Like um, the minority representatives in the company are, are actually getting a better shake right now than they were a year ago. So not everybody can get a win. But they do hold all the power when it comes to a Mustafa Ali. Um, and maybe it's like, all right, we'll give you your name, but you're not really going to start winning for a while. You'll you'll start winning next year. Um, but yeah, that's I, I couldn't have made this more loaded, everything I just brought up. So I do apologize for that. But um, yeah, it, all, it all tracks. I think I summed it up pretty well. I took enough pauses and hesitations to make sure I could breathe <laughs> and <laughs> think about what I was the point I was actually making. My wine's gone. Right. We gotta we gotta move on. Let's do this. Let's do uh, easily our favorite part of the show. And that is the Wednesday, Wednesday Night, Night Wars. Wars. Did you watch did you watch our YouTube show yet? We've got a beautiful graphic now. I promised two shows ago we'd have a Wednesday Night Wars graphic. I followed I stayed up till three AM that night and, and did it. Yeah. It's dope. You don't even know what it looks like. What does it look like? What is it? Blue. And uh, it's wrestling. Piece of garbage. Am I right so far? Nope. <clears throat> There's uh, no wrestling in it? No. Oh, man. Shit. All right, I'm exposed. Oh man, like a wrestler doesn't wear his own shirt. That's bullshit. God damn it. <laughs> I just wanted to do the Wednesday Night Wars, and now I'm getting outed. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the Wednesday Night Wars. It's not Al Michael anymore. <laughs> Here we go, man. Every week you get NXT. I don't know how you manage that one. I got AEW. I don't know how I manage that one, but that's what we're doing. Um, I, hmm. Based on what I'm looking at, NXT's full card versus AEW's, uh, for the record, not that we care, but AEW won the ratings war. So, you know, go t- tickle your pickle to that number. Uh, it's <laughs> just, it doesn't make me watch either one more or less. Uh, <laughs> but based on what NXT had versus what AEW had in its entirety, I think I might have to go first. All right. I think I have to go first. Um, So basically what we do is uh, the top three moments from each show, and then we have a uh, dishonorable mention uh, that comes before moment number one. Um, Matt, just looking at the two cards, uh, would you agree that NXT was the winner this week? I I think so. Uh, I mean, it's been something, too, that I, I think, I think AEW is kind of in the, in this period where they don't want to go too far in one direction. And that's kind of how you lose at pro wrestling uh, when you're writing your show. Like, they want to keep everything open so they at any point they can make one decision or another. And we've seen that really fail in WWE. And uh, I just... I mean, NXT is guilty of it, too. Uh, but, I mean, you know, they're giving weeks ahead of time. We're just, all right, Keith Lee, Gary and Cross, that's what we're doing. Um you know, let's roll the dice. I, I just, the Eric Bischoff stuff, I'm not really cool with. I mean, what do we, where, where is this going with like Orange Cassidy and Jericho? Because I, I, it kind of seemed like we could have given Cassidy a win already and we didn't. So I, I mean. Okay, pushing that to like a, like a bigger pay-per-view. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, well, I guess the point just being like, it, it's, it's not really it's just it's the middle episodes of like the walking dead you know like how you could watch pretty much episode one and two and then episodes nine and ten of the walking dead and you'll get it like, yeah you didn't miss a thing in the middle it kind of feels um, like what's happening right now well it's, um i want to i want to see your thought on this AEW right now they're doing a lot of uh the same philosophy like throughout from like bottom of the card mid card top of the card where they have uh, more or less an established former WWE employee battling a 20-something-year-old AEW prospect. So whether you're looking at um, Jericho and Cassidy, uh, whether you're looking at John Moxley and Darby Allin, uh, whether you're looking at Sammy Guevara and Matt Hardy, uh, 
I swear there was one other good one I had too. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's they're kind of taking proven WWE guys um, and having them fight the kid. And so far, the kids have not really won. It's still <laughs> WWE guys. And it looks like the philosophy is just while well, you're in the ring with a known entity, and just being in the ring with a known entity will help get you over. But like we talked about with Mustafa Ali, how much longer can you say that that's enough? You know, um, I, I mean, Cassidy's gotten comedic moments over Jericho, but he still doesn't have like a wrestling victory. So this is getting really close to, you know, um, putting Bray Wyatt or uh, putting Rusev in the ring with John Cena at WrestleMania and saying, wow, what a moment. He was in the ring with the real John Cena and then losing again. Remember when um, Rusev got the rock bottom from Dwayne? Wow, what Dwayne. a moment for Rusev to oh, eat a rock bottom forever. and get... <laughs> what a career highlight, a, a quick <laughs> rock bottom. Um, the, one, the one place where I think that this has a shot to be okay is I don't think that Matt Hardy is in AEW to win feuds. Additionally, if we're going to look at Jericho, He's somebody who put over fan fucking Dango at WrestleMania. So I don't know if Cassidy is going to ultimately win the feud, but in the very least, I think Jericho is using his powers for good. So I don't know what it means for, for Moxley so much, but at least for Hardy, at least for Jericho, it looks like there's going to be hope for the young guys. Do you, how have you noticed like NXT has been losing the ratings wars? Um, have you noticed an adjustment to their philosophy, like how they book a card? Have you noticed any changes? Do you have something in mind? Because I did not put I guess, any of that. I guess the one thing I saw is that, you know, for a while they were really pushing, like, you know, Champlain Gargano. Uh, they were pushing Finn Balor. But now it kind of feels like, you know, let's get, let's get Dexter Loomis out there. Let's get Bronson Reed out there. Um you know, let's get Dijakovic out there. Let's get Karrion Cross out there. So they're getting Damian Priest out there. Um, let's get Keith Lee and make him our double champion. So it definitely kind of feels like if you go card to card, you're like the tallest person in AEW is, you know, it's almost Matt Hardy. You know, like they don't have a lot of big guys, at least that they push heavily. So it kind of looks like AEW is trying to be the, um, kind of the more like average shaped indie darling, you know, uh, uh, promotion and NXT, it looks like they're doubling down on bigger people, you know, um, I, you know, maybe what they're, maybe that's where they see that they stand apart from AEW is that they have more beef. So they're trying to showcase that a little bit more. I just feel like if, if Damian Priest was on the main roster, we actually might realize like how he, he's not exactly ripped. You know what I mean? Like he might, he's going to go to the ring in the main roster and he probably looks a lot smaller than, than we think because he's surrounded by, I mean, he just was in a triple threat with Oni. So he's a little guy. I'm, I mean, I, you know, we love him. That's nothing against him. I'm just saying he is, he is little. It's like, uh, I feel like I'm Pat McAfee right now. Um, <laughs> ragging on a guy for being little, but I'm not ragging on him. I'm just saying. Uh, but I, I also think Damian Priest probably isn't too big. Um, but they, I, I think both shows actually, feature quite a few of their of the smaller talents i i think what they're probably doing i don't know if they're saying we need to be different from aew i really do think there's this um there's this idea that that they use to like uh push all their decision making forward of like i i don't I guess I shouldn't say that. I was going to say, I don't, I don't care what they're doing because they actually do create shows just based off the fact that dynamite is doing like a fake pay-per-view. Huh? I don't know. It's hard to dissect. You gotta, you gotta ask these questions earlier. So I, I know what to dissect and think about instead of running these through on the spot. But, um, yeah, I, I there's not too much coming out of my brain right now. Um, but you want to jump into your number three? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I'm going to say moment number three. Um, it's not exactly one match. It's more of a culmination. Um, I think for the longest time before they had a leader in Brody Lee, the Dark Order was just kind of floundering. Mm -hmm. um, and since Brody came up, you know, he got his title match and lost. True. 
Uh, but they've had, you know, pretty good run-ins. It looks like they're being taken a little more seriously, and that's gonna, what I'm going to do for moment number three. Um, they ultimately did get a win over the Elite and FTR. Um, you know, FTR got some boo-boos, which is, you know, the excuse for why Dark Order won. But they need to start winning these matches. They need to start, you know, showing their dominance. Um, you know, and Brody Lee and, my God, Colt Cabana. I, I, I don't know if I ever would have dreamed that those two would be together. Um, but not just that match. Uh, we also had Dark Order members John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Um, not winning, but still going toe-to-toe with Cody and uh, recent signee Matt Cardona. And it's just the, um, the inner circle and the elite get taken seriously because they get multiple spots on the card. Now it kind of looks like, you know, we want to push the, the Dark Order and make them a little more relevant. You know, let's, let's kind of sprinkle them out. They're a huge team. Uh, let's kind of sprinkle them throughout the show and by God, give them some victories against people with some, uh, some panache, uh, with a little street cred. So, um, it's just kind of nice to see. I always like, uh, I like when they give it a shot, you know, a new group getting some wins. So, um, I, I, I hope that they continue to grow and I, I hope they find some way at the next AEW pay-per-view to, you know, maybe get, uh, maybe get that big win, you know, not just a weekly TV episode victory, but a big win. Well, I'm going to cheat here for my number three because um, I'm going to take like it's it's really one segment, but it's probably two big, huge ones. But uh, I just I have so many to pick from that I want to put in my top three. This is how I'm going to cheat. So I'm going to say the segment that started with Imperium versus Undisputed Era that led to a punt from Pat McAfee uh, because it was I mean, you're talking to the best tag teams. Uh, I, you know what? Fine. I'm fine saying it. Uh, Imperium. One of the best tag teams in the world. I think they really are that much fun to watch. I think they have a different style um, than uh, than I think we're. I don't know. Then we're used to saying like this is um, this is like your this is how you define a plus tag team wrestling. I, I and I think a lot of it has to do with how they pace out a match, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And I really hope that Imperium get like goes to another level in regards to how much they're getting focus once all the COVID stuff has passed and Walter can come back and do whatever he likes. Uh, but you know, the main thing of this was, uh, so I love that match and Pat McAfee and, and, um, Adam Cole get into a, a little tiff, which distracts Kyle O'Reilly leading to the pin by Imperium. So we will get more Imperium versus undisputed era. Yay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Pat McAfee ends the night by punting Adam Cole's, head in and here's the thing this is i brought i took a quote from bleacher report because man are they butthurt about this um what what do we do with adam cole right now if he's not doing this and here's here's where i'm coming with with this we have the north american title uh tournament that's turning into a ladder match i think that's going brilliant and it's too bad that dexter loomis is hurt I really like the idea of Karrion Cross like affecting Keith Lee to the point that he's going to kill Cameron Grimes or or like nothing him during the entire match. Like that that was insane to watch. I think that was great yeah. storytelling. Um again, got a terrible grade from Bleacher Report. Uh so what are we saying here? Like Adam Cole deserves to be in the title picture for both of these or or what? No, there there's nothing really else for him to do right now. So it's fine that this is happening and it blew up on the internet. And now I already hated Pat McAfee. I want Adam Cole to rip his fucking head off. And that is such like great storytelling. Like I already want McAfee dead. Uh, Like the same things we were talking about before. So as much as I hate Pat McAfee, I will never watch his bullshit show. He is a really good heel and he knows what he's doing. Uh, like he walked out of NXT going real professional. And I, you just want to go, you, like if that, if that was all real, you'd just be like, you fucker, you did it. You're, you're the one who messed this up. You know, so it really is just a great job by Pat McAfee. I'm still never going to watch his stupid bullshit show because it's for fucking dipshits that don't know what good radio is or what good conversation is. They just want to hear a bro who's like, oh, I know what's up. <laughs> That's why he's a fucking piece of shit, but he's great for pro wrestling. So I'll just read this quote from Bleacher Report. and uh, The ending was more ridiculous than anything. 
selling McAfee's punt kick. <laughs> it's so lethal that it could knock out the former NXT champion. I'm cold. This is the same wrestler who kicked out a multiple finish. <laughs> and a match is champion. <laughs> I just, I couldn't read that article, like the grades from Bleacher Report, without just picturing uh, the tub of goo who's crying over his keyboard. Uh, just so butthurt about McAfee punting uh, Adam Cole. Yeah, I, I think they're doing exactly what they wanted to do. Yeah. Um, this is this is classic WWE storytelling where they found a, a person with legitimate go away heat, and you just yeah. want them to die. Uh, this is totally like the Bella Twins winning matches with twin magic and shenanigans. This is AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. We were like. Oh, the dream matches we could have had. And it's Shane McMahon, but it actually turned out pretty good. Um, yeah. And I think AJ was on board with it, and he was proud of what happened in that match. So yeah. um, I think Adam Cole, to be involved with this, obviously sees something. He sees money in going against Pat McAfee. Um, and, you know, Cole's going to win, so don't worry about that. Yeah. It's just this is... This is just did, one of those weird, you know, did everybody, you're, you're, you're grinding your molars just thinking about Pat McAfee potentially pinning Adam Cole. It's not going to happen, but did everybody see, this, it, you got it. Like the wrestlers yeah. involved in this, like Adam Cole would have said, no, I'm not doing this. Um, not to mention the fact that Triple H and Shawn Michaels had their hands directly on this thing, like this segment. They were, they were not even like figuratively, literally. Shawn Michaels had his hands on Adam Cole to check his pulse. Like, all of this was like, you got to believe Michaels is down there like, don't move a muscle. You look, pretend you're dead. Like, I don't know. What are we doing? It's pro wrestling. What the fuck? What are we doing? That was good TV. That was good pro wrestling TV. I just, it's one of those things where we're comparing um, AEW and NXT right now. And you either go do the same old, same old and have a gray haired old guy come out again, who really didn't have an eye for pro wrestling. If you think about all of the things that kind of went wrong under his leadership. Yeah. But we just like the tweets are just Eric Bischoff, thousand likes. Like it's just, it just says Eric Bischoff, thousand likes. It's like, but he, what is he bringing to the table? And this is a risk. This is taking a risk on like, let's take a piece of shit. Let's see what this comes. And, and that was a great segment. That was something different. And and I th I think when you take that risk, you bring in a guy who's not really uh, had a had a shot to show what he can do. And I fucking hate him now more than I ever have. I isn't that what this is all about? Not just bringing out some old fart to get tweets. Like, do something major. God damn. Yeah. And I mean, it's going to be all over like Fox Sports uh, when former punter Pat McAfee got his, you know, in a yeah. NXT pay-per-view from Adam Cole. So Adam Cole's going to be on Fox Sports. That's that's the bottom line. That's what's going to happen here. So um, I, Mike, I don't really see a negative. Yeah, you're yeah but two. number you're two. Um, yeah, I know. It, it was, there's a lot to go over there. Um, I'm going to say number two. <sighs> it's probably Darby Allen and John Moxley. Um, Darby Allen had a, uh, a championship match and, uh, I think he definitely <laughs> held his own. Uh, he definitely looked like a guy who belonged there. Um, and as far as like, when you find somebody that you have instant chemistry with, uh, the way that Darby and, and Moxley really like to punish their bodies in a match. Um, this, this was really a, a fantastic recipe here, uh, for a, a viewer. Um, one uh, one spot I did want to point out. There's so many people now who do um, like the rehashed move used to be a super kick, and now you know also in that list of like overused moves would be like a top rope suicida. Um, Darby did a uh, bottom rope suicida, I guess. And usually guys will go out kind of forearm first in kind of a like a torpedo style. Um, Darby went out um, and and. Uh, dove under the ropes and turned his body so he went like upper back and lower back first into Moxley's head and he went with such velocity that there was a an audible slap into Moxley's face like um like him taking a uh belly flop 
It from sounded like top. a kendo stick. Yeah, it sounded like a belly flop and a kendo stick, like that kind of. Uh, All right. That's so so hard you take the kendo stick to the top diving board. Yeah, and you you slap Indeed. yourself as you hit the water. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, Yokozuna's having a nice lazy <laughs> <laughs> spin around the pool, um, with his, his belly up. Yeah, I mean the match uh, it didn't end uh, clean, just to kind of protect Darby a little bit, I guess. Um, there's some shenanigans by uh, MJF and uh, Wardlow, and um, you know Darby doesn't deserve to win this quickly, not like this, but he does deserve to have a good match, and that's what he had. It just it wasn't quite moment number one. There's something else I'm saving for that. But man, moment number two from NXT. Um, I'm gonna go with the uh, I'm gonna go with the triple threat, uh, which probably leads into what I'm gonna pick for my number one, but um. I, I like this. I, I think it got uh, some thumbs downs from uh, from the rest of the world because they. I feel like Damian Priest is obviously the guy they want to give the push to, but I, I wonder if it would be more beneficial to see Oni or Ridge Holland. Jesus, um, if that guy didn't get you excited for like holy shit, uh, this guy would like throw down. Uh, how about he throw it out in like raw underground? That would be crazy to see. This guy's shoulders are insane. <laughs> he's, he's terrifying. He should have won that match if it was in raw underground. Like uh, <laughs> there weren't any rules. No, but um, overall, I, I thought the match was pretty fun, and I'm I'm always on board with o- when Oni has a chance at something. It's just it's so heartbreaking to know like even him getting to the five man ladder match just wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Oh man, he can't even be a contender for a title. Uh, but we we love Oni and and he. I, know, I wanted him to have like the you know when there's a big ladder match and and contender number six Sin Cara like whoa what's he doing in this match you know that's where I wanted Oni to step up. Well, I mean, I think he's got a. I'd be more excited for Oni than I would be Sin Cara. <laughs> Um, we'll leave it at that. But yeah, Damian Priest moving on. Um, he's getting the push here. I think that's the conversation piece. And um, I think we all saw it coming. It's not like a huge surprise. So I think if you could turn out a banger when you know who's going to win the match, I, I think that's that deserves a round of applause. It wasn't as good as what my number one's going to be, but uh, definitely, definitely better than, you know, what I... I would say it could have been an amazing match with Undisputed Era and Imperium, but it just turns out it's going to end with a kind of schmazzy thing. But yeah. uh, Mike, you're um, dishonorable mention not number one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's not that it was like god awful, but it was just Eric Bischoff returning. Um, the storyline was just that he showed up. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't add anything. He was the moderator for the Jericho Cassidy debate. He didn't really add anything. Um, his, quest- bump. his questions were literally, who's a better wrestler? Uh, why are you guys mad at each other? Um, and then he got to prop up Cassidy by asking, um, what are we doing about the rising water levels due to climate change? So I I just, I get it. I mean, it got you to go, oh, what's going on at AEW? Eric Bischoff's there. Uh-oh. But mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I don't think it was necessary. I I think it all costs the most important thing to do is help get Cassidy over as a, as a super duper star. And I just, I don't know if we needed Eric Bischoff to do that. I I think that if we just had Jericho Cassidy, you know, maybe, maybe this was their attempt to like get the casual fan involved. Like, Oh, Bischoff's going, Oh, let's see who he's talking to. Oh, who's this orange Cassidy guy. But eh, I I get that philosophy. I, I just wouldn't have gone that route, but that gets us to moment number one. Uh, it was no contest. Uh, Cassidy finally broke his silence. The silent protagonist uh, was able to talk. Um, he was eloquent. He was articulate. He uh, didn't answer or um, he kind of went in, you know, the, the storyline was he kind of knew that Jericho set this up because Jericho is a talker. Um, that Jericho picked a contest he could win, which is, you know, a, a joking debate. And Cassidy, all, the only question he answered was the one related to climate change and rising water levels. So it was it was pretty hilarious to hear him say that. Um, he got to take the sunglasses off and say, you know, this is the biggest match of my life and this is the biggest match of your life, Chris, because you could lose to a guy who puts his hands in his pockets. So I think it was uh, a successful 
segment that helped get two people over. It helps make you want to watch next week. And it did make that match, you know, added the, added the interest level to it. So I, I think it was a, a great, great success. Mm-hmm. If I may quote the great boy. Um, well, I, my, uh, honorable mention, uh, wait, dishonorable or mention. Dishonorable um, mention. Yeah. I, I, it's probably, you know what? That was probably me just, uh, what do you what do you call that? A Freudian Freudian slip. Freudian slip. Yeah. Uh, only because I, I don't know if any a lot of the stuff like propelled storyline. Uh, Bronson Reed, you want to just keep making look strong. <laughs> Lee struggling shows that carrying a cross is affecting him, but then his nothingness of Cameron Grimes really sold. Like I'm just gonna you know I got to turn this on. I got to be something different. Um, and then I I just love Tegan Knox and Indy Hartwell. So. Uh, a combined uh, dishonorable mention was just the fact that they weren't as impactful as the rest of the show. Um, okay. Man, I, I really sound like a NXT mark right now. That's what a fine. slappy. Yep. I'm, wearing, I'm wearing my baby <laughs> shirt. So, all right. So, hey, number one, we. Thanks. I miss you, Kyrie. Uh, I'm number a, I'm one, the Pirate Princess. Yeah. <laughs> Rhea Ripley uh, losing to Dakota Kai, Mercedes Martinez getting involved. I was actually watching it going. I can't believe Rhea's not going to win this. What is she going to do next? And they're going to help build up Mercedes Martinez, which I think is brilliant. Uh, give her, you know, it's it's one of those, uh, obviously, I have never been to prison, but, you know, from comic books and, and, and books and movies, I've seen that you got to go after the big dog. So, yeah, prison uh, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I just there's serving gruel and there's dementors yeah <laughs> uh so that that's kind of where i i like the idea that mercedes martinez would do that and this will be a little bit more impactful than shotzi where i think i think it is pretty cool that she took out like this uh the i don't know in the women's division i think she's just beloved she hasn't really you know made a main event push or she's not believable right now as like a champion but i think we all love her because she's just so quirky and she's got a tank um so <laughs> Martinez took her out and now it's like, all right, well, now I'm going to take out the, you know, the baddest B in the business, uh, which is yeah. Rhea Ripley, who's gone full Super Saiyan. Um, and then uh, Dakota Kai getting her shot. Uh, I know, I I've think been a mark for her for forever. Right. She like, just needs a good T-shirt and I'll buy it. This is this is one of those times where you've got the heel versus, I mean, EO, you don't want to lose the title either, but you're kind of thinking like all this shit that Dakota Kai's been through. Uh, same thing as like Tegan Knox, but all the shit Dakota Kai's been through. And she's, she's, she's easily, I think, the number three on the women's division. I think you've got EO, then Rhea Ripley, and number three for me is, is Dakota Kai. So this... This all adds up. She should get this shot. It'll be a hell of a match. And I love how they got to it. Um, I think it, you know, from two different sides, they're propelling storyline and uh, building up. You don't need to build up Rhea Ripley, but you do need you do need to build up her story for the next segment. So I think that's where this is. They knocked it out of the park. Um, okay, so, uh, Mike, I, I think I've let on pretty hardcore, which side i'm leaning towards that i i liked more i think after this discussion i've just probably embraced it more i i i'm definitely biased i i think starting with the fact that i like this is the show i pick to watch every wednesday um so i've probably got a better connection to all these characters and i want to see them all succeed mike do you feel the same way yeah i there was just a couple nuggets that were missing from AEW to turn it around. I, 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 I appreciate Matt Cardona. It's just, I, I, I don't want anybody to not, you know, have a job, especially a guy who's got that, you know, he's, he's talented. He's just, eh, you know, I don't, I don't need to see him pushed. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I didn't need to see, uh, you know, Matt Hardy coming back. I, you know, I get it. Because all they're trying to do is get these casual, you know, kind of get casual fans over to see these young guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think NXT definitely won this week. Uh, uh, any any time there's an instance where Rhea Ripley and Dakota Kai are doing battle, um, you know, I'm a big Tegan Knox fan. Uh, Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner should be on the Tag Team Wrestling Hall of Fame. I, I I'm going to be hyperbolic. I, I just really love the way those two guys fight. I love the way they. Uh, um, like they do the double team maneuvers, but somehow it's still within the rules. Like they're, they're just like clockwork the way that they, um, you know, will cut the ring in half. I, I love watching those guys. So I'm going to give the win to NXT this week. 
Well, that's uh, 52 weeks in a row, so... <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so... Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I have to give a quick plug. If uh, you are listeners to uh, the Discussion 5, I will be going live Saturday night with uh, the Hockey Podcast Network. They post the show on Facebook, so they'll be live on Facebook for their show called After Hours. Uh, Mike, you're welcome to join. But um, it's, uh, let's see, I don't know. It looks like it's going to be like 20 dudes talking hockey, drinking a lot. Um so I'm gonna see see what I got in the old cabinet to to try and keep up with those youngsters. It's, see if the you can do it, Grandpa. Yeah, keep up with those whippersnappers. See see what I can drink. Maybe just water that I've put some brown food coloring. You guys don't know anything about hockey. Let me tell you about Pavel Jasu. Yeah, I just have like an acorn. All right, well, uh, let me tell you, he can put some backs on mattresses. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, we'll we'll do all the posting on, on social media if you guys do want to keep up with that. Uh, but for the Pro Wrestling yeah. Podcast, obviously, FBO Podcast, and where you want to get all that juicy info. Hear me mispronounce uh, Jake Wenzel. Yeah, that's at <laughs> BOD Hockey. Um, <laughs> and it's uh, it's Gunzel one of these days. We'll get it. Yeah. Um, it's uh, at Brothers underscore of uh, underscore discussion for Instagram, YouTube channel. If you guys could uh, please. Share it with your friends. Uh, let them uh, tell them they've got to subscribe to it because uh, we're doing. We put in a lot of effort into that. Uh, but yeah, uh, check us out. Thanks everybody, uh, and we will see you next week.